This example problem is about entries for capital leases from the lessee side. So we can see here that the problem says Ernie Inc. entered into an agreement with Frosty Inc. to lease equipment for use in its ski manufacturing facility. The lease is appropriately recorded as a purchase by Ernie and as a sale by Frosty. The agreement specifies that lease payments will be made on an annual basis. The cost of the machine is reported as inventory on Frosty's accounting records. Because of an <coughs> Because of extensive changes in ski manufacturing technology, the machine is not expected to have a residual value. Ernie uses straight line depreciation and computes depreciation to the nearest month. After three years, Ernie purchases the machine from Frosty. Annual lease payments do not include executory costs. Other terms of the agreement are as follows. So machine cost is recorded <coughs> the machine cost recorded at inventory is 3.7 million. The price at the purchase option date is 3.25 million. The lease payments each year will be 710,000. Contract interest rate is 10%. The contract date of in the first lease payment is on October 1st, 2011. The date that Ernie purchases the equipment is October 1st, 2014, and the lease period is 8 years and we are supposed to make entries in 2011 to record the first lease payment and make adjustments necessary at December 31st, the end of each company's fiscal year. We want to record all entries required in 2012 and then prepare the entries in 2014 to record purchase by Ernie, assuming that no previous entries have been made during the year in connection with the lease. <coughs> so to make the entries in 2011 and record the first lease payment, First, we're going to record the actual lease, and that's these entries right here. A, a debit to leased equipment for 4166577. And that is to calculate the value of the lease with the financial calculator. Um, you have eight payment periods, and that was specified right here. Your interest rate is 10%. Your payment is 710,000. Your future value is zero. There was no residual value, and you will get um, when you compute the present value. It's 4,166,577, and we credit that amount to obligations under capital leases. Now, on the same day, October 1st, 2011, we are going to debit obligations under capital leases as well because this is our first payment. The entries for the first payment on the same day that the lease is formed. So the full payment here is going to the principal. And of course you have cash going out of 710000 Three months later on December 31st of the same year, you have a debit to interest expense for 86415 This is to record the accrual of interest for three months and you credit obligations under capital leases. <clears throat> On the same day you have an amortization expense of leased equipment. This is to record the amortization for three months. You take the 4166577, you divide that by 8, and then you times that by 3 twelfths for three months. That gives you 130,206. <coughs> now on October 1st we're jumping from um, 2011 to October 1st, 2014. We're going to have amortization expense of leased equipment for 390,617. That's to record the amortization for nine months in that year. So you take the 416, 4166577 divided by 8 times that by 9 twelfths, and that gives you 390,617. Then you have accumulated amortization on leased equipment of the same amount, 396.17. On that date, you have interest expense. This is to record the accrual of interest for nine months up until October 1st in that year. So we refer to this table to get the interest. You'll see on the fourth payment of 269,146, you multiply the amount by nine twelfths. So we have a table here of the interest expense and in this table you have the lease value your principal interest expense and the actual payment 
So right here is your beginning balance of the lease value. The first payment was 710000 There was no interest because that was the same day the lease was formed. So the full amount went to the principal. So that lowered the lease by 710000 So that brought you to this amount. And on the next payment, you had 710000 but you times this 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 7, 7 by 10%. That will give you 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 8. Um, you subtract this from your payment that leaves you with 364 342 going towards the principal and that leaves you with 3092 235 in the lease value and it just goes on until the purchase happens right here and so we take this interest expense of 269146 like our note says right here we multiply that by 9 twelfths that gives us 201,860. And then of course we credit obligations under capital leases um, because we're reducing the obligation by that much. And then these entries right here are to record the purchase. So we'll start down here. This is the amount of the purchase option. So that's just paid out in cash. And then this is the full amount of the lease to take this off the books. 416 six five seven seven then we have accumulated amortization for three years that's five hundred twenty thousand eight hundred twenty one times three that leaves us with one million five six two four six three the obligations under capital leases this is the principal balance at the time of the purchase from the table two nine six zero six zero two 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 nine six zero six zero two. That's the principal lease or the um, the value left in the lease that has to be paid off. And we are debiting equipment. This is the amount that's going to stay on our books um, of the equipment: two million eight eight hundred ninety-three thousand five hundred fifteen. And that is how you do that problem.